All right, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you're in. Uh, this is Lee Allison. I'm the principal investigator uh, here at the Arizona Geological Survey and the University of Arizona for the EarthCube Test Governance Project, which is hosting um, uh, today's webinar. What we have on our community engagement webinar today uh, really are two main things that we'd like to go over. One is uh, reviewing the results from the draft test governance charter that has been out in a crowdsourcing mode uh, extensively, and there's some really exciting results and very extensive feedback from the community on that, and our team uh, would like to go over that with you. And then there's an insider's guide to the All Hands meeting that's coming up in two weeks. We've got a, a, a really dynamic agenda. Uh, we were overwhelmed with the proposals for breakout sessions and work groups, and so we'd like to go over that and just make sure that everybody's prepared to take best advantage of the opportunities that are coming up. And we hope then to wrap up with a couple of minutes, a few minutes for questions and answers on any of the things going on. So I'm going to turn things over to Kim Patton, who's the project manager here at the Arizona Survey, to start off with that charter review. So good morning to everyone. Uh, just as a quick refresher of what we're referring to when we're discussing the draft charter review, uh, we released a draft of a governance structure in early May. And um, one moment, I think there's some issues with sound. We'll, we'll go ahead and address the sound issue in the chat. Um, in early May, we released a gra draft governance structure for EarthCube as a community, and this was created after reviewing numerous uh, end-user workshops and working with uh, members of the community through what we call assembly workshops or stakeholder workshops to gather input on the governance process. And so this was, this was the draft structure that we released, and we then had a series of activities that participants could, partic could activate that You'll notice, notice that a number of responsibilities are spread throughout this structure, and one of the items that is still open for the, the community is how these structures work and integrate together, and that's one of the items that we'll be addressing at the All Hands meeting. So in, in mid-April, we held a workshop to synthesize the results of EarthCube activities thus far. And from that workshop, we then put together three documents. The, or the draft governance structure that you saw on the previous slide, a charter, and a list of functions. Those three items were then sent out to the community for review in early May, and we provided a 30-day review on each of those elements. Uh, we just closed that review this Wednesday at midnight and have been since uh, collecting and collating the responses to the review. We're now incorporating that feedback and preparing for the all hands meeting where we'll be doing a set of scenarios and, and exercises to help test some of those items that were identified within the review. And then post all hands meeting, we'll take some time and we're looking for members of the community to help us wordsmith. Uh, and provide input into the draft based on what we hear at the all hands meeting so that then we can then present this back to the National Science Foundation for implementation in the demonstration phase, which begins next year. Well, next October. So how did we reach out to find and gather the input that we've received? We contacted members through the newsletter. We have over 1,800 people on the EarthCube newsletter. We talked directly with more than 200 people via the EarthCube workspace. We had a series of webinars where there were more than 50 attendees. We used our Twitter followers to release information, uh, over 900 attendees, or I'm sorry, participants that way. We used Facebook to gather information. And then we also did direct email marketing with a number of end user workshop organizers and members that attended the assembly workshops. We also worked 
directly with a number of professional societies, including the American Meteorological Society. Uh, the ASLO also provided some assistance for us through a series of tweets. AGI uh, highlighted this in their Geospectrum, which is an online newsletter. We then contacted a number of different listservs that we're part of, like the American Geophysical Union's uh, Earth and Space Science Informatics listserv. We used the Earth Science Information Partners blog to, to reach out. And then we also had a number of organizations and agencies retweet our request for community participation. And while there is potential overlap in these numbers, uh, we think we did a, a pretty good job of reaching out to the community, including uh, through AGI's more than 12,000 members, academic geoscience members, who participated. So there were a number of questions that we posed to the community that still were outstanding based on the synthesis workshop, such as what constitutes membership in EarthCube, what's the relationship between the chair of the steering committee and the office, how do we ensure and promote collaboration and information flows between the various committees, teams, and working groups? Who has the ultimate responsibility for all of these functions? And how do we clarify the EarthCube niche while still being inclusive? And these are some of the questions that we specifically asked for answers on in our various review mechanisms. Those included a strategic pathway exercise. We actually had two of those, a membership model scenario and then a data management mandate uh, scenario, and we had more than 250 participants uh, in each of those. We also did a comprehensive charter review survey, which was a section-by-section -section review of the draft charter, where we asked specific questions related to each of the, the sections, and then provided an opportunity to do a line-by-line -line edit for those that were interested. And finally, we had an overarching governance framework review survey, where we had approximately six strategic questions that we asked to the community, such as what are some of the issues that EarthCube will be facing over the next year or two that governance will need to address? Um, and these, these questions provided us, I think, the most feedback, and we'll see numbers associated with that here in just a moment. So as I mentioned, we had more than 250 participants in both of the strategic pathways exercises, and We'll be moving these strategic pathways exercises next into the demonstration phase, where we'll be doing continued testing of that uh, pilot project. On the comprehensive charter review survey, this was the, the survey that went through step-by-step step of the charter, we had more than 25 participants, which met our metrics. We were hoping to have 25 people uh, work through the entire charter. And we estimate that that probably took people about an hour to complete, so we appreciate the time that, that people participated in that. And then the overarching governance framework uh, survey, we had more than 55 participants in that survey. And we're currently in the process of analyzing the feedback that we've received on the charter, and we'll be presenting much of this at the June all-hands meeting and working through a series of scenarios and exercises that emerged from this work. So I'm going to pause here before we move into the all-hands meeting and provide a snapshot of what's coming up at the all-hands meeting and, and just ask if there are any questions regarding the charter review process, the feedback process that we've completed, uh, or just questions in general at this point. So we, we did go through and mute. We can go through and unmute people, but I believe you have the ability to go ahead and unmute your line um, through clicking on the red microphone that's next to your, just to prevent background noise, if you could please do that, that would be great. background noise and we'll move on to our next moment. 
So the information for the all-hands meeting is available on the Earth workspace, and I'll pull that up in just a moment once we're done with the slides. It is June 24th through 26th, so we're just over a week away. Uh, that's Tuesday through Thursday. And we are planning to go almost all day through um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We currently have over 115 attendees registered. Registration is still open. However, right now our hotel room block is sold out and our overflow room block is sold out. So um, unfortunately we can't assist with hotel reservations any at this time. But you are still able to register for the meeting particularly if you're uh, local to the D.C. area. We have more than 75 institutions, uh, organizations, or agencies represented at the meeting, and we had quite a number of session proposals and poster presentations that have emerged with more than 45 uh, session proposals that we received. We are going to have three note speakers at this event, and we'll touch base with which speakers is that. Our goals for this meeting are really to have a convergence on the demonstration governance charter and, and form next steps for implementation on a pilot governance structure. We also want to leave with a state of cyber infrastructure and the geosciences, and we'll do that by sharing results of existing projects and looking what's available in, in other um, cyber infrastructure projects. And we also want to provide a forum for communications within the geosciences. So we've offered ample time for birds of a feather sessions, and there's a variety of locations where people can uh, exit the, the main plenary sessions or the, the sessions themselves and, and have two, three more conversations. So we have ample time and opportunity for discussion between and amongst members and attendees. We do have a fairly packed day agenda. For those that are unfamiliar with EarthCube, we're actually hosting a welcome breakfast. It's an introduction to EarthCube breakfast where you can come, you can find out what has EarthCube been doing the last two years, uh, what are we planning to do with this meeting, and it's, it's really designed for people that may not have attended any other EarthCube event or activity in the past and provide them with some basic background knowledge on EarthCube prior to jumping into the all hands meeting. We, of course, will cover some of the EarthCube history and do an introduction to EarthCube in the, the plenary session, but it won't go into as much detail. And so if you're new to EarthCube, if you've not attended an event in the past, we'd highly encourage you to attend our, our breakfast on the 24th. It'll be at 7. We have our plenary for the morning. Uh, we're very excited. Eva Zanzerkia, the program officer from National Science Foundation, will be kicking us off with some welcome remarks. And we have Paul Edwards from the University of Michigan, who will be providing us with a great plenary discussion on why EarthCube is so important and, and the different types of interactions and science that EarthCube can and will promote in the future. We'll also have an opening reception, uh, which will occur at 6 o'clock on Tuesday the 24th. And our inqualters will be giving us a, an introduction from the Advanced Cyber Infrastructure at National Science Foundation. She'll be giving us a, a, a nice um, opening reception remarks for that. Days two and three are largely focused on getting work done, uh, lessons learned. We, we do have a, a regroup every morning to go through what we've covered on the first day and our goals for, for the next day. And we're very excited because Roger Wakamoto will be joining us on the morning of June 26th. He's the uh, Assistant Director for Geosciences at the National Science Foundation. And he'll really be providing a framework for the direction of the Geosciences Directorate and the science that can be achieved with EarthCube in place. As I mentioned, we'll have birds in the feather all day, every day, available for individuals who are interested. We also have a series of hands-on discussions and technology samples that are taking place during the lunch sessions on Wednesday and Thursday. And if you're interested and you'd like to help us participate in next year's All Hands meeting, we will have a sign-up sheet available for those that are interested in participating in the organizing committee for next year's meeting. Our agenda, current agenda is available online, and again, 
I will uh, go to the Workspace site in just a moment where you can find that full agenda, and we'll post these slides to our slide share after this. As I mentioned, these are our keynote speakers. The topic for Paul's discussion is governance and cyber infrastructure and earth system sciences. Irene will be discussing the direction of the Advanced Cyber Infrastructure Division and the partnership with GEO, which helped develop EarthCube. And Roger will discuss the direction of the Geosciences Directorate and how EarthCube contributes it, particularly the science that can and will emerge from this. Some additional information on the special events that are occurring that EarthCube 101 is what we're calling it. So again, if, you, if you're unfamiliar or have not attended an EarthCube event in the past, please join us for that EarthCube 101. It's 7 a.m. and breakfast will be provided. And then we have our, our opening reception, which is a poster session from all of the EarthCube funded projects. So you'll be able to mingle with others that are at the meeting as well as learn about the current status of the funded projects. So on that, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for questions regarding the all hands meeting. And I will go ahead and also show off where you can find information on the all hands meeting. Right now we have the site workspace.earthcube.org and we'll go ahead and post all of this into the chat. And front and center is registration for the Earth all hands meeting. On that, you arrive at the registration page where you can find out other information on the agenda or discussion posts. We also have the virtual participation for those that aren't able to join us in person. We will have virtual participation. And here's the agenda is currently in the form of a Google Doc. And you can send us. Looks like there was a question from the audience. Karen? Yes, hi. Um, I submitted in the registration for EarthCube, there was the option to submit a poster abstract. I have not heard back one way or another uh, at this point. Should I assume that my poster is or is not accepted? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, if somebody was speaking, I couldn't quite hear them. Could you um, uh, say that again, please? Sure. Everything with the poster is so. Let me talk to you quickly offline. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of audio in this. Uh, you need some music. Thank you. Uh, the it's for young from Jersey Messengers. I have a follow up question. Phil, was that a question for us? Uh, yeah, I have a follow-up question to that. So does it uh, suppose that all the f projects that are supposed to be by default have a poster uh, spot? I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty hearing you. I heard you a request oh. regarding the EarthCube posters and, and all of the projects. Yeah, so is it by default that all the projects uh, will have uh, one spot for themselves? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the audience meeting? Uh, yeah, another question is that uh, you mentioned that there are candidates uh, to propose channels of birds of feather. Uh, when are you going to decide uh, which proposal uh, may be made? Okay, I'm not sure if it sounds.
sounds like there may be one or two people talking, but we can barely make out anything. Either can you speak up or get closer to the microphone or something? Oh, a lot of questions is that when are you going to decide which idea proposed as the bird of further or panel will be uh, selected? We have a sign-up sheet for the birds of a feather, and so what we'll do is we have um, space dedicated all day, every day for the birds of a feather, and there's a sign-up sheet that will be at the all-hands meeting, and it will be first come, first serve based on time. So okay. we'll have a, a sheet that has time frames available, and, and you're welcome to go ahead and uh, put your name and uh, title of your birds of a feather, and uh, that, that will be in the or registration area. Where is that um, Google Docs again? Where, how do we access that? Through the agenda. Yeah. If you yeah, if you click on the agenda. Uh, where is that? I mean, I'm I'm at the EarthCube. Um, uh, sorry, EarthCube All Hands Meeting. Oh, I see. Section Agenda. Okay. Okay, I got it. Thank you. And this is Anna. Um, as we get closer to the meeting uh, next week, we'll be populating this same All Hands Meeting workspace page with other important links, such as links to the Google Docs um, that notes will be taken. Um, the list of participants will be provided with contact emails and institutions um, and other information, and we'll be in touch via uh, these Reg Online um, emails that you've been receiving. But this workspace.earthcube.org slash all hands will be the, the online space for all attendees to get as they may need. Do we have any other questions for the All Hands meeting or for the Charter Review? All right, well, hearing and seeing none, I believe we'll go ahead and sign off and say see you all in on the 24th. So, thank you. We're looking forward to having you. <laughs>